Hey, 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 and welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing our series this week um, and possibly even next week as I go through our homeschool 2020-2022 first quarter and wrapping up and recapping all the things that we've done and, and what we are enjoying, what we're working on. And so yesterday you guys got to see me talk about all things handwriting and writing with ease. And today we are going to chat all about math. So, if you'd like to hear more, grab you something good to drink, and let's get started. Mm. The only time I drink cranberry juice is when I am pregnant. Okay. Alright, guys. Uh, so, like I said in the introduction, this is all going to be about math. And if you're new here, hey, how are you doing? I'm Tasha. This is Tasha Pivots, where we talk about all things mamahood and homeschool and how I'm pivoting through this journey. And yes, we have finished up our 13 weeks of our first quarter, and we are entering into our second quarter. Uh, but beforehand, I wanted to sit with you guys. I wanted to share all the different curriculums. If you're new here, or you've already been following along since we announced our curriculum choices for 2021, 2022. So I'm gonna do math today. I'm sharing not only my uh, preschool math that we are using, but I'm also gonna share with you guys my third grade a uh, third grade curriculum for math and and what we've been doing entering into third grade because I'm going to kind of preface that that we're not necessarily there just yet okay so first we'll start with preschool Josephine is enjoying her uh, journey through just introducing her to numbers and introducing her to a number recognition and counting and uh, so it's been really fun because we've been doing it as we've gone along like as she started having speech and just speaking We automatically were like, okay, let's count one two three, you know, and uh, she has before we started the school year She was at ten uh, She could count up to ten But now it's really just like recognizing possibly even practicing writing the numbers and uh, and then counting and then looking at things and say does this fit or does this not fit so what I chose is something gentle off the grid in the sense of like I didn't go to a big box curriculum I didn't go to anything that was more known per se except for the fact that highlights maybe from Scholastics I think is who it's from uh, this is the curriculum that we've been doing or the workbook per se uh, it's not actually a curriculum but it's get ready for math big fun practice pad for preschool ages three to five and it has stickers in there it has some fun activities some are i think a little advanced for her that she needs way more um, time to progress and understand or just a lot of supervision and then other parts i i literally could say this is what you're going to do here and um, as long as i'm kind of excuse that car um, as long as i am there to be present she does really well okay so i'm going to show you guys we take uh and give her a number per week and that has worked really well for us so i'm going to show you just august the first number was zero and we just practiced writing not only the number but also writing the word zero and then it would have like these cute little puzzles where you've got to follow the zero path all the way down so i'm trying to give you a close-up of there um and then there's like an exercise after every page where you know what do you can you tell which one's matching this one took a little bit of practice because obviously her eyes are just looking at all the colors and trying to recognize does this one look the same does that look the same so this took a little bit time when we first started um this is like in august and then as we've progressed because now we're on like number nine i think or something like that um see if i can find it let's see i'll go to eight because eight is in september okay so like eight is one of her favorite numbers is probably the one that she recognized first and no matter where she's at she's like that's eight <laughs> so here we go her practicing writing the number eight uh, writing the word eight, I don't push that because it's a lot of letter recognition. Like she can, I have her actually point to the letter and say what it is, but I don't actually expect her to be able to write that by herself. And that's probably the only thing that I'm not a fan of this curriculum or this work pad that it first starts with her writing it by just copying and tracing. But then the next they expect you to kind of like try it yourself. And I'm like, she's, she's barely being able to like adjust to just writing the pencil and recognizing the letter. So I don't put that much emphasis on that, but I do have her practice counting 
I do have her, let me see if I can get to the back. There's some exercises for her to cut and paste, which has been her favorite part, I think. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys kind of how that works. So she'll do some color sorting, but I still add some counting in there. And it just like, you'll cut off the bottom and then you put them in the right category. And that helps because then you can see what your child's recognizing. Is she recognizing or he recognizing the colors? Um, and then once you place them all there and then going back and say, okay, now can you count how many frogs? Like how many yellow frogs are there? How many blue frogs there are? And so she really likes this little activity and often I can just give her, I say, get your scissors, get your glue stick. I'll cut them out for her and then she just puts them where they go and then we review it. Another thing that I really like that they have in here, I'll show you, is how many are left. This was actually this past week uh, that she did this where she has to count the fish and then it says cross out three. So she'll cross out three and then she's got to tell me how many are left. And then I love that she even attempted to write the numbers of what they were on the side. So she's getting a lot better and she's progressing at the rate I expect her to. It's no pressure. I don't think that for third grade or third grade for preschool, there should be a lot of um, pressure or expectation of anything, honestly. Uh, it's more so like in just inviting them to the table, uh, sharing with them what you're going to be doing and, uh, and, and just seeing how they're feeling about it all and, and then say, okay, well, we're going to do this right now and, uh, and then we'll do it. And then if she gets tired of it, like after she's done her two pages and she's like, okay, I don't want to do any more. What's next? Then we'll move on. Uh, with math, I have it on a grid system. Again, everything is on a certain calendar day. Um, as far as like how many days a week we do things. I'm not the type to make everything um, be every single day. Like every single day we hit up all three subjects. Like no. Oftentimes it's more like we focus on two primary subjects, one fun subject, and, and vice versa. And it kind of teeter-totters all the way across the week. Especially for Josephine because she's really only doing literature, science and nature, and um, and then and math and then her writing is really just um, it's a fun activity for her because she just loves tracing So there we go. That is her math and if you have any questions, you know what to do put them in the comments below about that Now moving on to my third grader um, If you've been with me for a while, you know that we chose to do the good and the beautiful math to last year and we got through the first book. So there's two part books um, in their original curriculum. And we prefaced that because they did redo their whole math. Um, and so I have, this is the first book. We completed this one before the school year was up. And then we still had about, I would say we had about 15 lessons, 15 to 20 lessons still left in this one in part two. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna rush to start math three. I rather really take the time and, and really know math two. So in order to do that, I went ahead and because we're on a, on a year round homeschool, I thought it'd be great for the first three months that we just really focus on understanding and getting um, those fundamentals down when it comes to her second grade math. So Zoe's light gears in, in other subjects, but math were kind of really where she should be and taking that time and not rushing it. So I encourage you, mama, if you're like, well, my child's in third grade and needs to be doing third grade math, breathe. Us homeschooling mamas, our kids will be in all different grade levels and different things. My daughter reads at a fifth grade reading level, but she's in literature for third grade. Um, her math, she should be technically, if you want to put her in third grade, but she's doing second grade math. Um, so then, you know, there's just, you go with, it's less about the grade levels and more about um, what your child is, is more engaged with and what comes natural to them. So that's how I, I go with it. It's like the things that my daughter naturally gravitates to is literature, English, art. Um, that is, that is her language. That's how she, that's how she speaks. That's how she kind of presents herself with what she's excited about. Science is a huge one as well, but when it comes to math, it's more so of that's where we've got to put more uh, work in. That's where we're going to give more support in. And so I had to, you know, remind myself, you know, like this isn't public school. You don't have to be at this level where you're held back. There's no holding back. It just means we've got to take more time with it. So with that said, this is our math two course book, and it's been practicing more and more with, um, 
you know, subtracting triple digit numbers, uh, starting to get used to, you know, when you're counting by a certain number, you're learning your times tables, whether you recognize that you're learning your times tables or not. Um, but I'm always kind of responding to that, like when she was doing, you know, count by eights. And so I started talking to her about like, that same way you're counting by eights is also the way we learn to do multiplication and like how it, it your timetables go. So there's a lot of conversation happening. Um, I think my daughter, she is a, an achiever type mentality and spirit. And so it does bother her sometimes when math doesn't come easy to her. And so we take a lot of time, like I said, to utilize the math box that comes with the older curriculum and use the manipulatives that are resources at our fingertips because it really helps our children to not only see things in one dimension, like I wish I had this when I was in math because math wasn't my subject either. And I noticed with her, like, it's one thing to have to just see some numbers on a, on a board and write them down, but it's another thing to actually have to understand that like you can do this with physical things in your home. You can do this with money. You can do this with toys. You can do this with anything and show how if you, you know, two plus two or two times two, how, what do we get when we do this? And so, um, I, that's one thing I do enjoy. Now I, I haven't purchased the math three yet because I just haven't got around to it, but I am still looking towards utilizing the good and the beautiful's math. Um, I am not some huge advocate of good and the beautiful. It's just, I use their handwriting and I use their math and that's what we've been doing. And that's where we tend to want to stay in that pocket until we're ready to progress to something else. I've been looking into Singapore math and all these different, um, ones. And, uh, you know, I'll let you guys know if we change our mind or we shift, or even when we decide on what we're moving into for third grade, what does that look like for the rest of the year? So I'm thinking that this book, we will be done by halfway through our second quarter. So basically right before the Christmas holiday, we'll be ready to then slowly start introducing what our third grade math will look like. And so that's what we're doing. But every week there's a lesson. There's a lot of basic um, uh, practices here that just gets them. It's, a, it's called a daily dose. It's them doing some quick subtraction or addition. It's having them count by a certain number up to a number. Um, it's having them remember what numbers come before and after a large number. Um, remembering our ones place, tens place, and hundreds place. Um, and how does that work? How we can manipulate that? How we can understand problem solving um, questions and equations? And so that has been very helpful for her. And so we've just been kind of hitting the pavement of actually making math almost a daily practice uh, because I recognize that with everything else that we do because of what she already speaks, excuse me, we actually need to put some more support in this. So that's where our schedule is shifting a bit. Um, whereas Josephine will do math two times a week maybe or even flip it three days a week. Zoe's doing math almost uh, currently in the last two weeks we've been doing math every day and you know what we do is there's a lesson for every week um, and it's got all these different parts to it some people might find that overwhelming to me it doesn't because it allows me not to have to focus a full two hours to math it could be like she does her daily dose and that might be just her like touch base for the day in math but tomorrow we'll go and we'll bring out the manipulative back box and we'll start working through certain activities to make sure we understand what we're doing and so that is, that is our approach to math right now. And um, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I'm excited for where we're headed. Uh, and I have honestly had to just, you know, remind myself, what is the reason I homeschool? What is the reason um, that we are choosing to take the slower pace of life and not try to rush this curriculum? And I uh, just want to encourage you, if you're in a different curriculum that you feel that that's where your child is maybe needing more support, uh, then, you know, remind yourself of that. Like, it's okay. It's okay to take your time. We're not on a clock. We're not racing against anybody. So that is what we're doing right now uh, for math. And if you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate. Put them down in the comments below. Share with me what math you've been using. Um, uh, even share with me maybe some testimonies on how your child is responding to math, whether it's their favorite subject or it's the subject they need more support in and maybe some resources or things that you're utilizing to make that better. I'd love to read them. I'm always willing and um, excited to learn new ways and, and excited to just hear where you guys are at as well. Uh, I can't wait to go on our third part of our quarter recap tomorrow as that is a huge collab. So please check that out tomorrow um, on Thursday. Please give this video a warm thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And until next time, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.